Good day. Welcome to Sunday School Television. It's so good to see you again and to be with you here uh, as we celebrate this Lord's Day. And we're thanking God for September the 18th. Wow, we're moving toward the end of the year. The summer is over. Uh, young people are back in school. And it's just a great time uh, to be alive and to be able to celebrate with you this day. This ministry, Sunday School Television, is designed to minister to the sick and to the homebound members of our society who are unable to maybe attend their local church service because of their health issues. And, and the nature of the program is to give to you, our viewers, a glimpse of the Sunday School uh, lesson taught in churches and church schools around the country. We use a variety of lesson commentaries from some of the different publishers and uh, they all are dealing with the international uh, Sunday School lesson curriculum for your review through this program. Uh, we thank God for the music ministries uh, that support each episode every week. And you can catch us at the same time each week on this station and on our Facebook uh, uh, at facebook.com slash S-S-T-V-P-I-N-C period. Reverend Dr. Willie Stooks uh, is the producer, uh, an executive producer of the um, a Sunday School Television Ministry, uh, and I today am your expositor for this week. Uh, I'm Pastor Henry Harrison, Senior Pastor at the Baptist House of Prayer, where 80-82 West 126th Street in the village of Harlem. And it's good to be with you again to celebrate in this uh, new quarter that we have, uh, talking about the sovereignty of God, uh, that our God is sovereign, that our God is powerful, our God is in control, uh, that uh, people may think that God doesn't know what's going on or that he has nothing to do with it or he can't do anything about it. He's in control. He is sovereign, and he has all power. Uh, in his hand, an omnipotent God, uh, an omniscient God. He knows all things. He's, he's, he's an omnipresent God. He's everywhere at the same time. And so we salute him <clears throat> and give him his props and his praise that he is the sovereign Lord. In these lessons um, <clears throat> this quarter, we've been speaking from um, the book of Isaiah. Uh, and the lessons come from the book of Isaiah. Uh, this lesson is, this week is called The Foundations of the Earth. And the scripture text is from Isaiah uh, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. And uh, the time is 700, uh, and between 700 and 695 years before Christ, and the place of uh, Isaiah's prophecy is Jerusalem. <clears throat> the golden text for this week says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Oh, this is a familiar passage of scripture we read many times uh, in the scripture about the sovereignty of our God, who he is. Uh, don't you know? Didn't you hear about it? Uh, hasn't it been told to you? From the beginning of the world, uh, don't you have an understanding from the foundations of, of the earth who God is? That he is the powerful one. That he is sovereign over all of the earth. And it's a call for godly understanding. You know, many times uh, things kind of seem to, to pass us by or go over the top of our heads and doesn't sink into our hearts. But you just got to know who Jesus is. You got to know that God is God and that he is sovereign. And his son, Jesus Christ, uh, who shares the glory with the Father, uh, also is sovereign in all things. And he's able to do all things because he says he is. He's the shepherd that cares for the sheep. Uh, he watches over them and uh, he gathers them uh, and, and takes care of them and leads them and keeps them. Um, <clears throat> four questions 
opposed in Isaiah 40. Um, gently, he, he chides Israel, and he reminds them of who they are. Don't you know? Don't you know? Haven't you heard about it? You are the people of God. Now remember, he's writing to Israel, the people of God. You are the people of God. Don't you know these things? Haven't you heard about them all through the scriptures? Had they been told to you from the very beginning? Don't you have an understanding? You should, because you're God's people, and you should know him better than anybody else. Well, the Lord... Uh, uh, can't be compared with humans. And, and in this first uh, part of the outline, it said the Lord's sovereignty over all the earth. He's superior. He is in charge of everything. And even us. Who do you compare to, to God? Now the kings of the earth all had their rulers. The, the countries and, uh, of, the, of the earth uh, all had their rulers. But who would you compare God to? Well, he says that they're, they're, they're in their proper perspective, powerful people, but the power of God transcends all of them. Uh, he's the Lord that sits over the circle of the earth. Uh, you know, um, uh, years ago in, in, in antiquity, um, people didn't know that the earth was round, and, and they would say the earth was flat, and if you went too far, you'd fall off the earth. And that was a common belief until... Uh, Columbus and some of the other explorers began to sail uh, from certain destinations and kept on sailing and realized that there was curvature in the earth. But right here in the very beginning of the scriptures, the Lord says, He sits on the circle of the earth. And, and when you watch a, a wonderful sunrise or a sunset, you can actually see when the sun is rising or setting that there's a, there's a, a curvature of the earth that you, you begin to, to, to see uh, with, the, with the eye. And, and so here, uh, 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 God is, is the one who sits on this, uh, uh, high above the heavens, sits on the circle of the earth, and, and uh, says, yes, he is the ruler above the highest point of the earth, and he observes its, its inhabitants from, from the vantage point of being over all, and see them all around the world, whether they be in the south or, or in the north, God sees them and understands them. And so Isaiah uh, explains that he is sovereign over all of humanity. Kings and kingdoms uh, will all pass away. And the songwriter says, but there's something about Jesus. There's something about him as a king of kings, as a lord of lords, as a, a ruler of rulers. He will always uh, uh, be prominent and in power because of his sovereignty. And so there are those who go about trying to find their way and uh, going to judge and say this, that, and the other thing, but they still uh, speak um, in their own uh, ways and their limitedness. Uh, the wind of God is a power that can carry them away, the Bible says, like a whirlwind. God has this power, and he speaks in power, and, 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 and a, a mere breath from the Almighty causes those with ruling power to wither away and fail. Uh, Isaiah later on says uh, that, that, that the nations of the world are like dust on the scale. Uh, you know, just the dust on the scale, that's, that's, the, that's the, the nations are equivalent to the being dust. Uh, oh man, from dust thou art, to dust thou shalt return. Yes, uh, he is sovereign, and we are the inferior and although we boast and we try to say this and the other thing, uh, God knows that we don't have all the power we think we are. And we become foolish in our trying to be like the Messiah. We can't be like him. He is sovereign in all ways. There's evidence of his control. Uh, he asked the question, who, to whom will you liken me? Who, 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 uh, I love the phrase that I am God and beside me. There's no one else. Who are you going to sit beside God? <laughs> Nobody. That compared, there, there, there was this one uh, idol god, uh, Dagon, that was in, in the temple, and in his temple, and when they captured the Ark of, of the Covenant, which is the, represented the, the presence of God, and they put the Ark in the same temple with Dagon, the idol god, and when they came back the next day, Dagon had fallen down in front of the Ark. Uh, and so they picked him back up, put him back together, and put him back up on a stand. And when they came back the next day, Dagon had fallen again in pieces. 
And they said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Now, it would seem to me that they would say, oh, this is the true God. We will worship the God of, of Israel. But they didn't really say that. They said, let's get this God out of here. Let's get this ark out of here. Uh -uh. Our God has fallen in, in pieces, so let's get him out of here. Mm, strange in our thinking. Who do you liken him to? Who can you compare Jehovah to? There's nobody like him. Uh, the songwriter Andre Crouch said, can't nobody <laughs> do me like Jesus. He's uh, my friend. Uh, and, and so uh, all the other deities, all the other uh, ones that we create with our hands, and Isaiah laughs at some of the uh, uh, people who believe in our gods. He said, how silly can you be? You took gold. You fashioned it, and you made an image out of it. You made an image out of the silver. You carved the wood. You, you chiseled the stone and made an image, and then you called it your God. You bowed down and said, this is my God. I worship it. You made it yourself. And then you're going to worship it? Uh, I said, something's foggy with that thinking. That's not crystal clear. Something's wrong with your thinking. You're thinking it's all. Who do you compare God to? No. Second point of the outline says, the Lord cares for his people. Aren't you glad to know that God uh, cares for us? In the midst of our situation, in the midst of things going on, things can go wrong, things can seem to, to turn on us. Uh, seems like God doesn't know what he's doing or doesn't know what's happening, but I tell you, he cares. He cares for each and every one of us. There's nothing that's going on that God is not involved with. That's why he says uh, he doesn't give us more than we can bear. Uh, he's always there. He's always there on top of the situation, and he knows how to strengthen you in times of situation. He's the Lord God. He's Yahweh. He's the, the self-existent one. He's the creator from the, from, from, of the earth from one end to the other. Everything moves by him. He never faints. Hallelujah. He's never weary. Praise God. The young men will faint and, and, and fail and fall away. But Isaiah 40, the, 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 that last verse says, But they that wait on the Lord, huh, those who hope in the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Praise be to our God. He gives us the strength that we need, and so we don't grow weary. He gives power uh, to those that are faint-hearted. He and those that have no might. He increases their strength. Uh, so many times when we are laden and heavy laden and can't seem to make it, all of a sudden uh, there's a power that comes. There's a surge of power that God gives us that we can do this. Uh, Old Negro Spiritual says, sometimes I get discouraged and think my work's in vain, but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the second verse says, uh, don't ever be discouraged, for Jesus is your friend. And if you lack for knowledge, he'll not refuse to lend Ah, there's a bomb in Gilead. There's a, a God who has power, who does not grow weak, but strengthens you and cares for you because you are his own. And as you wait on him, ah, just a little while. Uh, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, we sometimes feel that we're not going to make it, but 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 he he said that a thousand will fall at your right hand, uh, at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. It won't come nigh you because the Lord will protect you. He will guide and guard and keep you because He is sovereign in all of the affairs of men. Well, praise be unto our God for this lesson today, uh, which lets us know. That yes, God is our creator. He doesn't faint and he's not weary. He is an on-time God. He's an ever-present God. He's watching over you and over me and all of our situations. And he's able to keep. Uh, God, I was three years old singing the song. Yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. Fight manfully onward. Dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He'll carry you through. The, the chorus says, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. For he is able, uh, able to keep you uh, and sustain you and to love you and to help you. And he will carry you through. 
Father God, we thank you that we have a sovereign God. We thank you that he's the God who is the king of all things. He's the God of all comfort. He's the God that sees and hears and knows and understands our situation. He is God of our comfort. And all of the earth is founded upon him. He has not lost control. Nothing is happening that he's not a part of or in control of. And that includes uh, international affairs, uh, national affairs, local affairs, our own private lives, and our own homes, our own families. He's in control. Thank you, God, for being sovereign. Now I pray that if there's some today who don't know you as Lord and Savior of their life and have never trusted you in all of your power and all of your might, you're big enough, the songwriter says, to, to, to make and create this whole universe. Yet you're small enough to live in our hearts. We invite you to come in today, God. Live in us. Make us the new creations that you promised to make. For if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, all things become new. And we ask you to help us and to keep us. In Jesus' precious name we say, amen, amen. That's all today for Sunday School Television. See you next time. God keep you and God love you. God bless you. It's so amazing. It's so amazing.